Well, it's Monday, and it's uh, roughly uh, 12.15. Well, 12.15. Got the 441 Victor up on the lift. I have the new um, chain uh, that's uh, the right uh, size now, width-wise. I think 520 chains and 530 chains are the same length, link to link. The length to links. But uh, the 520 seems to be narrower, and that's how it should be. So I'm going to try to put it on this bike. If you remember last time I was doing this, I could could not get a chain to fit, no matter what I did with the adjuster, because um, it needed a half link. I don't know if this one will or not, so I'm going to give it a try and see what happens. In the meantime, these two Triumphs are finished and ready to go home. This guy's still waiting on the Speedo, and this guy... Um, I'm trying to start him and I'm waiting till Kevin gets here so he can use his size 13 cloud hoppers to kick it over a whole lot easier than me. We're going to go into the ignition system and see what we find. So anyway, waiting on a Speedo, two bikes ready to go home, and the leg braking 441 Victor is on the lift. Oh my goodness, the new chain is on temporarily for fitting. Uh, with the adjusters all the way forward, so I've got as much adjustment as, you know, you need over the years. All this is all the way forward. This is the new chain, and this is where the master link goes. I marked it with white paint because I'm going to take it over there and grind it off. But um, it's perfect. I, I don't have any problem with this. I do not understand... Or should I say, I do not remember what the biggest problem was back then, but new chain fits perfectly. I'm going to put it on. All right, the chain's on. Um, looks good. Feels good, fondles good. Uh, let's see if I can get the master link around here. Show you what I do. I'm sure most of you have seen this. Maybe some of the new guys haven't. When I put a chain on, I put a piece of safety wire around it, around the master link, like so. It goes through the gap back here so that it doesn't rub on anything. It just sits there and holds the master link in place. Uh, I make the extra curl go backwards flush just because sometimes there's clearance um, opportunities for scraping inside the fender um, the chain guard. So I just lay it down flat. I don't try to make the curly Q fold under like you really should, you know, mill spec. This is just an extra added uh, safety device on the master link. You can do it on all your bikes. And um, it's a good idea. Uh, the next thing I did was align the rear wheel using my, let's see if I can find it. Hello. Ah, my fancy dancy wheel alignment tool. It's just a piece of wire that I bent Put a point on and have another slidey piece of wire. One of my guys said they use uh, a zip lock, a, a zip, a zip lock, <laughs> zip connector, fastener, and it worked just fine. So um, I take that from the known position on the inside of this pig back here. I'm trying to do this with one hand, interesting. A known position there, hold this in, get it into the exact center of the bolt right like that okay from the known bolt back here then take it to the other side and go from the same known bolt right there all the way back let's see if I can get in here and fold it in and right to the center of the axle. So when you have the exact same length from the known position to the bolt to the axle center, uh, you, you're, you're aligned. Okay, so it's an easy way of aligning a rear wheel. Uh, try it, you'll like it. So right now I'm going to bolt everything down tight since things are still just a tad bit loose. I'm going to go over and make sure that all the nuts and bolts such as on the anti-torque rod, uh, make sure both sides of the axle are tight and um, then let the bike down and see how it goes. Well, I think the um, 441 is uh, complete. I put the um, rear chain on, set it tension, and um, adjusted the rear wheel alignment. 
Um, I think I'm going to go put on a pair of boots and see if I can kickstart it just for the heck of it. And um, if I can, then I'll call it good. I'll double check the work order, but I think we've done everything that was requested. So, there it goes disappearing into the ground. Best thing I ever did was put that lift flush with the ground. There you go. All right, I'm going to go put some boots on and come out and try to start this thing. Well, I'm going to give it a go. I got the gas on. I just checked. I've got uh, lights. So I've got ignition. Got a horn. I'm going to go over there and put it on top dead center. Then I'm going to nudge it gently past and up top dead center with the decompression lever pulled in until I go past top dead center. Then I'm going to return the Kickstarter to the full upright position. Fasten your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen, and try to do it stroke all the way through. That's how I started it last time. Uh, let's give it a shot. Here we go. All the way up. Just past. All the way up again. Okay, that was fun. All the way up on compression. Just fast, all the way up. And that was fine. Okay. All the way up. Just past. All the way up again. Okay. All the way up. Just past. Just passed all the way up again. And let's go. Okay. Knees starting to give. Now go. All right. All the way up. Decompress. Just passed it. Maybe a little too far out time. No. Okay, I'm trying it with throttle and without throttle. So, all the way up, decompress, just barely past top dead center, all the way up. Okay, not a lot of joy. Good sloppy tickle. We got lights, so we got power, <coughs> got a horn, so we got power, sloppy tickle. All the way up, decompress, just passed, all the way up, and we go. Alright, all the way up. Decompress, just passed, up again, and then go. Okay. All the way up. Decompress, just passed, all the way up. No go. That was a full throttle. Thank you. 
ignition off. Let's pull the, uh, for cleaning the pilot jet. See what happens. What it feels like. Lowbrow Customs Pilot Check Cleaner. They had seven in stock. I just bought all seven, so if you're going to try to buy one, they're out of stock. Oh, my knee. Okay, one and three quarter it was. Let's take it all the way out. Looks good, feels good, bundles good. A little strange. Huh. I'm not sure. Going here. Pilot jet's clean as a whistle. No obstructions at all. Okay. change this uh, pilot jet adjuster I'm gonna get a uh, get another good new one out of there it's uh doesn't look bad bad but it's a little weird bad so I'm gonna go get another one put a new one in there okay I've got a nice new um let's see if I can get this thing to focus yeah there we go Idle adjusting screw, I, idle mixture pilot mixture adjusting screw. I'm gonna put it in the bike. And there is a line in there that says there's always time for lubrication. So let's just put that in there again. And it's all the way in. Oh. Okay, it's all the way in and snug. Back a half, half, one. I'm going to go one and a half. Typical traditional starting point. I'll kick it a couple more times before I call it a day. And he's starting to get up. Okay, tickle, tickle, tickle. Oh, we got tickle. All right. Ignition on. It is no joke. Interestingly, the uh, carb cap is on backwards. I don't think that'll make a difference, but it is on backwards. 
There we go. All the way up. Just past compression. All the way up again. And no joy. All the way up. Just past compression. All the way up. And no joy. Pass compression. Half a throttle. No touch. Okay, my way. All the way up. Just take a good nudge of pass. No joy. All the way up. Just nudge it past. No joy. All the way up. Just nudge it past. Wide open throttle. No joy. No throttle, just fast, and no joy. Okay. Zero pops, zero spits, zero indication that it wants to run. Today's casualty is one kneecap. Okay, we're done for the day. I might try this again tomorrow. I might let, let it sit there until Kevin gets back and he can kick on it. So anyway, I'm going to go check the paperwork, make sure we've done everything that was requested other than getting it running and it for the day at four o'clock.